live in a digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all, all united. united. Welcome, everybody. My name is Mitzi Laszlo. Um, thank you for coming, especially on a Friday afternoon. Um, I imagine you've seen a lot of talks this week already. Um, my, my background is in neuroscience. I studied uh, decision making and was frustrated, basically, at not being able to access big data for public health. So I came back to Europe. I was in Brazil at the time. and worked for the European Commission as an independent advisor for H2020, later went on to work uh, as the third employee for SOLID, the startup of Satin Bernard-Lee, uh, the inter inventor of the web. Um, and more recently, I've been an uh, independent consultant for executives around strategy and cybersecurity. And I've been carrying out some, some research, which I hope one day to structure as a PhD. I wanted to share a bit of that research, mainly with the intention to spark debate um, about computational infrastructure in the public interest and what that would look like. Everything is digitalizing. It is impossible to enter restaurants without a QR code, realistically manage your bank account, or speak to your local authorities without access to the internet. And when we digitalize, we become dependent on a lot of stuff. This is my local data center, which I see when I go to the POC, and it's full of databases that look like this, which connect to submarine cables that run under our oceans in a vast network. And that's only the physical stuff. There's also immaterial stuff like code, the code that is necessary for you to be able to log in is ultimately made and, and is, is built and also maintained by someone, as are standards that describe how to send and receive data in a way that it can be read. Um, a lot of this stuff is controlled by private corporations, particularly in the USA and, and China. And that, that's quite a radical shift because it used to be that computation was done by the state, by the nation state. Today, the calculator is controlled by private corporations. Um, even GCHQ, uh, UK intelligence relies on Amazon web services, which means they cannot carry out their stated mission without some sort of interaction with a, a private foreign entity. It speaks volumes that the Dutch government has a whole department to take care of Microsoft contracts. In 2018, they, they carried out uh, an investigation and came to the conclusion that Microsoft essentially, uh, as controller, could determine how data was processed independently without any kind of consultation with the Dutch government. Similarly, in Sweden, uh, there was a, a big debate about if storing government documents on the cloud constituted a breach because of the Cloud Act, um, the US government could, in theory, uh, access Swedish government documentation. Not even beginning to talk about Apple Pay, MasterCard, Visa, these are all uh, US entities, there's no European equivalent. So even financial transactions, which is a pretty core uh, element of, of the nation state, cannot happen without some kind of interaction with foreign private entities. I don't want to, you know, all the examples I'm giving are very con concentrated on 
European dependence on the USA, but I don't want to give the impression that uh, it would be solved if, if, if this would be brought nationally. This is a screenshot from Zorgdemain, which is a platform used to make doctor's appointments here in Amsterdam, where I'm, I'm living and working. Um, all your patient data is, is stored on, on this platform, and it's a private company. Um, there's a Dutch bank who's a stakeholder in this, in this company, and it raises a lot of questions. I mean, what if Dutch medical records are used to adapt uh, insurance packages or credit scores? What, what are the dependencies? What are the strategic risks that happen when this new player is present in public health systems? The, the debate that I want to, to raise is really about the relationship between the private and the public sector when digitalizing. So a lot of early investment in the innovation such as uh, GPS, touchscreen, uh, the, the web itself was, was in, paid for by the public. Um, also, a lot of the infrastructure is in part paid for by, by the public, but um, the public does not control this infrastructure. They are dependent on this infrastructure and the parties that do control it often do not pay tax. So uh, I, I wanna really talk about the legitimacy of that control and what kind of strategic risk we run into. And if we can imagine a scenario where it is treated more as a public utility on a global level. There have been historical precedents of making elements of infrastructure public rather than private. Adam Smith in the 1700s was very actively lobbying to make roads public. In his time, private players would uh, build the road and there would be a toll on the road and to use the road you had to pay uh, the person to, to, to get access. And this meant that people who had apples could not necessarily get to the place where apples could be bought. Um, and it's a blocker. So in the logic of Adam Smith and his colleagues, uh, he was pursuing a, a publicly funded road that would act as a multiplier for trade. My particular interest is around public health still. That's where I started and ultimately where my interest still lies because I think there's a lot of opportunity. So I don't want to dismiss the value of computational infrastructure. I just want to talk about the governance of it in a way that would make it useful for the public. Um, I hope I've sparked your imagination a little bit and uh, would love to hear your thoughts and, and, and have an open debate about this. Thank you. If there are any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat or let me know. I'm not sure if you have the ability to unmute. All right, well, if there are no questions, then I think that's the end of my talk. Uh, I'll leave the channel open and, and welcome any conversation. Um, 
I hope I hope I managed to tickle the imagination a little bit. I imagine you're all quite uh, overwhelmed with all the talks you've seen this week. Thank you for coming.